What's up, guys? Ribbon here. And I'm Talos. We're the Studley Boys. Welcome back to another episode of the Studley News Network. Um, we have a lot of Xbox news to cover in today's episode. Microsoft finally dropped a price and release date for the Xbox Series S and X. And afterwards, we're going to do a quick breakdown on the second Ubisoft Forward event. Timestamps and links will be down in the description below. Like and sub if you enjoyed the video. And guys, if you guys want to follow us uh, in our Twitch, we do game there every Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays together. Definitely follow us for the latest updates on those. With that being said, let's get on with the news. Let's do this. All right, guys, rolling into our very first article, basically the juicy one for this week is the news on the Xbox reveal for the Xbox Series S and the xbox series x so let's talk about that real quick yeah so we're going to start off with um with the the price and release date and then later on after that we're going to cover the uh a comparison between the two in terms of specs all right uh the big one obviously um just kind of a little backstory um obviously uh th this happened i believe like maybe two three days ago from the the, the current recording of this video mm -hmm. uh basically there was a tweet sent out that potentially leak the prices as well as the release date for the Xbox Series S and X. And um, it was basically confirmed that following morning on the Series S. And then the next day, they confirmed it for the Series X. Yes. Now, what is that price and what is the release date ribbon? All right. So, according to this article here, um, Xbox Series S, which is the, um, I believe, the, uh, the digital only version. Um, also, they revealed the, the look of it as well, which yes. is actually kind of controversial and very memeable very memeable yeah so xbox series X s price is 299 and pre-order starts september 22 and the xbox series x will cost 499 which will be out november 10. so yeah, they're both going to be out on they're, they're both going to be out on the november 10th but the pre-orders start at 22nd for both consoles yes okay so um first off what do you think about the uh xbox series s uh the way it looks oh dude like uh i, I was looking at the the some of the uh i guess the fan art that people did of it and honestly that one looks a little bit more what i thought will be like a like a square you know console but this one is like they they flipped it around and it, it, it was still a white console but now there's this giant black speaker looking thing obviously people are memeing it to look like a like a like a speaker boombox type thing yeah um like a radio or people like saying if you lay it aside, it can be like a grill. Uh, there's a <laughs> meme of uh, uh, there's a meme of people saying that it looks like a like a washing machine. Like yeah, my like my, my favorite one is like someone someone photoshopped a fall guy's uh, a face on the speaker. Yeah, yeah exactly right. It's like what the hell? Like uh, they they could have just made it all white, but I I guess uh, from what I was I'm thinking, I think that's just where it it, it cools the system down, right? Like, like it's like holes to cool the system down. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's it's, it's just like a vent or something like that. Something um, like that, but yeah. Um, the the whole the, the next gen consoles all look kind of goofy, right? Like this one, you know, the, the little goofy looking speaker, like the Xbox Series mm -hmm. X, kind of just looks like a like a refrigerator or something like that because it's like very <laughs> angular, very blocky, and then um. Mm -hmm. The PlayStation Five just looks like a like a router or something. So yeah, exactly a yeah. router or like a a, a pure fighter or something. Yeah. So the, um, the design but, the uh, design was very ambitious for these next gen consoles. <laughs> uh, I, I guess they 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 want they want to be amenable. I don't know, but uh, they want that attention. Like oh my god, like what 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 the hell are they thinking? But um, what's your opinion on it? Like do you do you like the design? Honestly. No, I I actually don't. Um, I feel like it's like uneven and unbalanced. You know, it's like it's it's that whole that block that that speaker like right like on a, a pure white console just sort of I don't know. It just sort of just it, destroys it, like the the balance of it, and it just because it just stands yeah. out and it looks unsightly. I'm not I'm not a big fan of it to be honest. Yeah, Rivet's very big in uh, feng shui, and it it, it goes against <laughs> his feng shui. It goes against the energy of the room. <laughs> but um yeah i'm 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 kind of same boat as you like uh definitely like it just feels out of place but let's let's talk more about the release date that's kind of like um what i anticipated like right around november time frame but i don't think it's gonna be that soon um but i'm i'm also pretty happy with that um like with the uh, release date it kind of has like um 
that first move uh, initiative. So now it's up to the play. Uh, now it's up to Sony to pretty much like talk. Okay, what is your price? What is your release date? And I'm I'm thinking I'm predicting that it's probably going to fall somewhere around that time frame as well. What do you think? Yeah, uh, Sony's probably going to release their um, their price soon. Um, because like that's that's what we were predicting before. A lot of people were predicting that um that Sony was just waiting for Xbox to release their price before they they release their own. Okay, so let's talk about the price for the Series S now. Two ninety nine. Okay. Um, that's really good, actually. Like, dude. Um, like someone someone there was a post that someone posted on Twitter, I believe. And uh, they they said that the original Xbox, the like back when it first came out, the original Xbox was also at a two ninety nine price point, and now now we're, we're getting like probably eight times the the graphical output, and now the the Series S will also be the same price point. So I think that's really really cheap. Yeah, I mean it's it's very inviting, especially for for people who who weren't sure that they were gonna get um an Xbox. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's like it's like a really really good option if if there's like one or two games um that are but then again you can also get them for computer if you have a computer but there if there are some games that are exclusive for the xbox um that you want to get you know 299 isn't isn't a bad price um mm -hmm. but it's like it's sort of you get you get xbox without fully committing to it almost yeah it's sense. definitely more like a it's definitely catered to like more like the the iffy uh, iffy if you want to get the console or not for those exclusives as well as like more of like a budget if they're if they're on the budget it's definitely much more affordable all right, so let's talk about the Xbox Series X now. <clears throat> so we mentioned earlier it's going to come out November 10. Um, we've already talked about the way it looks. Um, mm -hmm. I actually like the way it looks, uh, to be honest. It's very, uh, you know... Minimalistic? Yeah, it's very angular, very minimal, nothing nothing unsightly about it. You know, it's very blocky looking, you know, but it's it's at least it doesn't have like a big dot or something on on the, on the front of it it also looks pretty small too because they, they did it side by side with the uh the ps uh a, a series s and series x and um they they look like it's fairly like like compactable like like you can you can fit it in most areas is what i'm trying to get at yeah i have a picture right now um it's significantly uh big i feel like it's twice the width of the xbox series s and then maybe like just slightly taller Okay, so Xbox Series X will cost four ninety nine. What do you think about that? Honestly, that's pretty good price too. Like uh, that's kind of like what I predicted it. I was kind of hoping it'd be more towards a three ninety nine to really, um, I guess, put a pressure on um, on Sony and the PS five releases. But four ninety nine, I think it's it, it falls pretty fairly. I think we talked about the pricing. Um, now we're 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 gonna try to compare the um, the specs so we can give you like some 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 sort of context um regarding the the price differential all righty so first up here on the category cpu um they're pretty much using the same cpu there's a slight difference obviously well the series x has a a 0 0.2 gigahertz advantage at, um as well as a point uh, roughly 20 gigahertz with uh, simultaneous multi-threading yeah so slightly more powerful slightly yeah but i feel like it's not like it's not gonna make a big difference in the in the grand scheme of things now uh, in terms of uh, the graphics processor um the xbox series x is running a 12.15 teraflop graphics card yeah that's compared huge. to the xbox series s is uh, four teraflops yeah three times more powerful which makes sense too because i'm um, just a, a quick caveat on that uh the the, the series s um they, they, they're going they want they're only going to output to 1440p with 4K upscaling, whereas the Series X will be full uh, native 4K. In terms of memory, Xbox Series X is uh, stronger. Internal storage also uh, pretty much double the storage on the Series X. And performance-wise, like I mentioned before, uh, it is targeting 4K at 60 frames per second, up to 120 frames per second, whereas Series S will be more targeting towards the 1440p, at 60 frames but upscaling to 4k not native 4k yeah so like like, like we were talking about before if, if you're not really that into 4k or even have a 4k tv to support that then uh series s will definitely give you the um the initial um i guess the console you, that you're looking for more targeted towards uh those individuals okay so the thing that stands out to me the most here that because because the series s doesn't have um a disk drive 
I, I was hoping it would make up for it by um, by its internal storage, but I'm a little disappointed. It's only 512 gigabytes of internal well, storage. The, the reason why, to, to me personally, that, that that's not such a big deal is because a lot of these hard drives, you can always replace it and, and put it your own internal hard drive and just format it. Yeah, uh, that's kind of sure. like that's kind of like what I did with the um, the uh, the PS4 here. Uh, but uh, if you want, if you definitely want more storage, as well as they have support for USB uh, external hard drives too. So in a way, it's not such a big con. But I definitely get uh, if you're paying that kind of price. Obviously, that's the the price you pay for a cheaper console. And and quite honestly, one terabyte is to me personally not a lot either. Because uh, a lot of games, we don't even know how big these games are going to be. But if the PS4 games are pushing 100 gigs per game in some extent, um, what about the uh, the 4K gaming, the, the native 4K gaming? Are they going to be double that? So like one terabyte in my eyes also is not that good either. Now that we, we know the, the differences spec-wise, um, mm -hmm. which system are you still leaning towards more if you were going to get um an xbox between series s or series x yeah oh uh, definitely series x like um, i'm definitely more for the because uh, i want to see the the next gen graphics so if, I, if i want to get something like that i can understand uh those that want to get those and just kind of play the the x the xbox exclusive games but for me uh, i want to see the the what the next gen graphics looks like with ray tracing and all of those look fancy terms thrown around in the world and um, so that, I'll probably go for more Series X. Mm. And also, four ninety nine to be honest, is not that bad, uh, comparably to what I thought it could potentially be. Like for me, I'm not like too big on like the Xbox. Um, so if if I was to get it just to play like a like an exclusive, I might just get like the Series S. Um, I'm not too big on the whole four K thing. Um, it says here it, it can run up to sixty frames, up to one hundred twenty. Um, mm -hmm. so that alone is uh. That's that, that's it's, more important for a lot of people, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying. Like, if it was like three ninety nine, it probably would be like it really like kind of push a like a thorn in in Sony's side uh, and be more competitive. Um, but at the same time, we don't know what the price point will be for the uh, PS Five. It could be five ninety nine. So that's if that's the case, then that that really will still hurt it, regardless. Let, let's talk, talk briefly about. Uh, the predicted price again for the um, PlayStation Five, as well as the digital version of the PlayStation. Don't forget there's two versions. Um, I'm thinking that the digital version is going to be three ninety nine. Potentially, the 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 one with the one that's uh, has the disc, the Blu-ray disc, um, is kind of risky. But I think they might go and match the price at four ninety nine, or maybe fifty dollars more. If they would if they would price their uh, PS5 at like a 599 price point, uh, that might put PS5 in, in a slightly dis disadvantage, especially during the holidays and when people are like kind of like more more so saving their money uh, during those holiday seasons. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think 500 for um, the PlayStation 5 with the disc drive sounds fair, and 400 for uh, the one uh, the digital only would that, that sounds fair. Uh, we're going to cover a couple of, uh, of new features regarding both of the systems. Mm -hmm. Now, according to this article, um, two new evolutions for the system is the quick resume and smart delivery. So according to this, right, quick resume um, allows, you, allows you to suspend multiple games at any point and resume them whenever you want without loading screens. Uh, badass. Yeah. We don't know for sure how this will look with multiplayer games. Will you get booted from the match of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 17? Or, or will you just sit there motionless waiting to get sniped? Only time will tell. And then the second feature is smart delivery. Um, it says here, if you buy a game for Xbox One, you'll also get the Xbox Series X version of that game when you upgrade consoles. So obviously not all games will fall under the umbrella. But, um, you know, first party games like Halo Infinite. Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Cyberpunk 2077 as well. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, a PS5 also has something to the extent of smart delivery, yeah. but also it depends on the game as well. So, like, if you, uh, I believe, I forgot what game it was exactly, but I saw it on the um, uh, the PSN, where if you buy this, you get a free upgrade to the PS5. So yes. that that's also pretty cool too. Yeah, and like some games, like um, like uh, we covered the the NBA. Uh, 2k game right the, the when you have to uh pay separately for the 
the next gen upgrade well actually i think for sports games you do have to buy it separately yeah unfortunately whereas like cyberpunk i feel like is one of the few games and uh, developers that you that actually allow that free upgrade from the previous gen to the current gen so uh that also trans uh, translates also to the playstation side as well yeah and it says here regarding smart delivery <laughs> is it necessary for backwards compatibility uh it says here it's not um one thing I wanted to point out as well uh, regarding the Xbox uh, versus the, the PS5, um, the Xbox Series X and S will be backwards compatible with most games, I mm -hmm, believe. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas compared to the PS5, I, I believe it's only going to be backwards compatible for some, to some PS4, PS4 games. games. <clears throat> right, right. So mm -hmm. PS3, PS2, PS1, um, uh, tough luck with that one. Yeah, but then again, you could probably buy it on the the classic store, whatever, whatever I forget what it's called. But the, if you want to buy like classic games, uh, that's been ported over to the PS4 slash PS5. But in terms of like, um, yeah, that, that's still like that's still a, a kind of a blow to those who have like a huge collection of PS1 and two and three games. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> regarding transferring your save data from Xbox One to Series X. Um, well, as long as you're you're you have a connection to the internet, and you're signed on to Xbox Live. Your games will be saved to the cloud. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you don't have to worry about uh, transferring saved data, which is great. Uh, let's talk about some some games now. Oh yeah, let's do it. The Xbox Series X launch lineup is looking better, according to this article. We covered the news regarding um, Halo Infinite being delayed. That was like one of the big selling points for, uh, oh, for yeah, the yeah. Xbox Series. Yeah. Uh, X, S and X. Um, well, that's out of the way. Um, you know, will there be other games that will be good enough to replace that? As far as the launch lineup is concerned, um, it does look okay, though. So we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We have Gears Tactics, um, Yakuza Like a Dragon, Destiny 2 Beyond Light, and Tetris Effect. Mm -hmm. So that's five games. Um, you know, three really solid ones, and Destiny 2 Beyond Light is an expansion for, for Destiny. Mm -hmm. um, Tetris Effect, I, I guess, that's like... I, I guess, yeah. If you're a diehard Tetris fan, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. But Assassin's Creed Valhalla Gears and, and Yakuza Like a Dragon, that's a pretty solid uh, lineup. Now, the one thing, like, okay, um, um, before we go, go into um, the, the next topic, but basically, in terms of Valhalla, and um, I'm, I want to say Yakuza as well, but they're not exclusive titles. Um, but they are launch titles, according to this article. Uh, Gears Tactics, of course, will be a exclusive title. Um, but it's not like a major Gears, uh, I guess, a numbered version. It's uh, basically a tactical version of Gears. Yeah. Uh, if you're into that kind of gameplay. Uh, it might not appeal to everyone, especially uh, you, you might love Gears, but maybe you don't like the uh the tactics uh mechanic to it so that that to me it's not really a win in terms of the exclusive side yeah but the one thing i do want to bring up to kind of like uh not hamper too much on it is um there is going to be a xbox showcase for the tokyo game show later this month that we're going to be covering unfortunately we probably won't be able to live stream that event um when it actually goes live but we still we, we'll, we'll still talk about it in one of our upcoming uh study news episodes yeah um but i'm hoping we'll get some better launch exclusive titles for the xbox series x and s okay so moving on to the last uh, article uh regarding the xbox uh console um this is a, a pretty big one in my opinion ea play coming to xbox game pass at no extra cost now i've That's said huge it, yeah i've said it before um like the real strength of um, of Xbox is coming from uh, its its whole its Game Pass and Gold subscription. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. It doesn't have a lot of really really good uh, you know exclusives like Sony does, but in my opinion, this is like its strength. And now they added EA Play to it, which makes it even more appealing. Oh, the one thing I want to mention too, I, I feel I feel like uh, in terms of the Xbox side of things, I feel like they're really trying to be more consumer friendly. Uh, in terms of like you know getting the backwards compatibility, getting this uh, the game pass, uh, getting 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 stuff like at a very cheap price and also a budget price as well for like the Xbox Series S. Um, whereas I feel like uh, the the Sony side could be a little bit more like 
more premier stuff. Uh, not necessarily better, but premier stuff. Yeah. Um, but um, that that's the 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 field that I'm getting between these two like marketing schemes for both uh, companies. Yeah, that's a good point. It's um it's also very different, which is good. Um, it's not like um you know the same system with just different games. It's like you get different. Like for example, like like you mentioned, um, Xbox is going more for accessibility, whereas uh, Sony is going more for exclusivity. So it's um I feel like it's like a good contrast. Um, it just really depends on um on what what type of gamer you are, really. You know, uh, do you want access to uh, more games? You want backwards compatibility? Then go with Xbox. But if you want like you know exclusive titles, then definitely go with uh, Sony. Definitely. <clears throat> Uh, says here, available only in the PC Xbox Ultimate Game Pass. It grants players access to exclusive in-game content, early access to newly released games for up to 10 hours, and a wealth of EA titles. The service typically costs $5 a month, but will be included for free to Ultimate Game Pass. Right now, uh, this, this is definitely a, like the, the first moving advantage we see so far from Microsoft in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Xbox side. Um, but obviously we want better launch titles. We want to see some gameplay using the actual uh, specs the, from the Series X to kind of like captivate some of the gamers coming into it. Uh, and hopefully we'll see some of that on the Tokyo Game Show that we we're covering later this month. All right, guys, rolling into Tell Us Tidbits now. But before we get started, let's talk a little bit about our October event. We're going to be doing a October Horror Fest, uh, basically of horror-related titles that myself and Riven are going to be playing throughout the month of October, and we need your help. Basically, in our Discord, link in the description, you can place your votes on games that we have listed. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely, if you guys haven't already, be sure to check our Discord, uh, check out the games that we have listed, and um, yeah, we'll definitely be seeing you around, for, and we'll definitely excited to see what games and frights we'll get for October for FS. Now, let's talk about some games now. For our first article here, um, which actually isn't a game at all, but it was a game. If you guys are familiar with Shenmue, um, that was an original game back in the Dreamcast days. It has been remade, remastered, and all that for the PS4 and all that. Um, but it looks like it's getting an, its own anime treatment as well. According to this article, it'll be a 13-episode series that retells the story of the protagonist Ryo Hazuki. Rolling into our next article, some Nintendo news. It looks like um, kind of the caveat some of the earlier Nintendo news. Um, they're bringing out a like a revamp version of Switch. And it looks like they're trying to ask uh, studios here to make games ready in 4K. So maybe a Switch Pro. All right, in um, Pokemon related news, uh, if you guys are interested in that, uh, it looks like there's a Japanese hotel chain right now featuring pokemon related rooms so that's pretty cool especially if you're into uh the pokemon franchise so maybe i'll keep eye on that whenever i visit japan hopefully after this COVID thing ends <laughs> we talked about this last week about mario turning 35 but not, let's not forget about sonic looks like sonic is turning 30 as well and sega plans some big big multiple new games it doesn't say what games are going to be coming out for it but uh, maybe a Sonic the Hedgehog 5, potentially, or maybe Sonic Adventures 3. In Kingdom Hearts news, uh, Tetsuya Nomura is basically um, kind of uh, teasing something happening uh, in, in 2022. So he's definitely looking forward to it for the 20th anniversary of Kingdom Hearts. What could it be? Time will tell. In Minecraft-related news, um, obviously for those that have played on the PC, they have like the VR-related stuff. But now VR is coming to Minecraft for the PlayStation as well later this month. It's some sad news, unfortunately, for GameStop. Um, looks like GameStop will be closing about 400 stores this year. As we mentioned before, GameStop was doing well at the early of the year, but um, unfortunately, it's things uh, quickly a downfall here for GameStop. Uh, but uh, losing up to $100 million in revenue from what I saw in a previous article. Um, but... Um, Maybe with the release of the consoles later this year, maybe it'll help bounce it back up. But um, definitely some sad news there. And some PS5 related news. Um, basically, someone made a 24 karat gold PlayStation 5 and surprisingly gets a price point before the actual PS5. According to this article, uh, the, the 24K gold digital is about 8,000 pounds. 
the 18, the 24 karat gold PS5, roughly 8,900, uh, 8,099 pounds. Uh, I'm not sure what, uh, how much that equates in US dollars, but uh, yeah, if you want a golden PS5, now's your chance. In Mandalorian news, uh, Season 2 has finally got a release date and has been revealed. And that date is for the Disney Plus, October 30th of 2020. Finally, some wrestling news, uh, believe it or not. Uh, looks like WD mandated, um, WD basically mandated wrestlers to end any Twitch streams. Uh, WD, uh, according to this article this past Sunday, WD held a call with company in ring talent regarding what is described as the reinvention of the products. In this call, WD described that it would not only own the wrestler's ring name, but also their real names. And thus, uh, due to, I guess, um, penalties, fines, suspensions, and outright terminations from the company. Um, it pretty much banned wrestlers from using their name and their wrestling names in Twitch-related streams. That pretty much includes Tao's tidbits. Uh, obviously, if you guys want to check out the full list of articles, the link in the description for you guys to check out. Now, back to the main news. All righty, moving on to our last article of the episode. Um, this one sort of flew under our radar a little bit. Uh, we covered, Big time. Yeah, we covered Ubisoft's forward first event. Um, maybe a couple of months ago, but yeah, Ubisoft had their second episode of Ubisoft Forward, and uh, we're mm -hmm. just going to do a quick breakdown of it. And a um, little disclaimer, uh, we're not going to cover all the, the games that they showed, um, just like the, the main big ones, or like the important ones. And of course, if you guys want to see the full article, we have the link in the description um, with basically um, all the titles mentioned here. Mm-hmm. All right, so the first game here, uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising, gets a Breath of the Wild-esque gameplay reveal. Ubisoft finally revealed more information about the upcoming Immortals Phoenix Rising, previously known as Gods and Monsters, showing off a Greek mythology-inspired world in a gameplay that looks heavily inspired by Nintendo's Legends of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And it looks like it too. Yes. Uh, it says here it'll be out December 3rd on the Switch, Xbox One, PlayStation, PC, and Stadia. Um, but it looks like it looks very colorful, actually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so some some areas look kind of darker, like around here. But uh, for the most part, it is a little bit more, um, I guess, colorful, like you said. Yeah. Here's some uh, combat. Um, this guy kind of looks like um, what's his name? The guy from uh, what do you call that game? Uh, for the... oh, I know you talking. I I know you talking about. Um, what is it? Yeah. So this main character kind of looks like Pit from from the Kid Icarus uh, series. Um, yeah, yeah definitely. Big All grown up, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Swinging a hammer at minotaurs. Um, now, in this clip, yeah. it sort of makes it look like there's, like, aerial combat as well. And you you were able yeah. to fly. So that's kind of cool. Here's I'm some... sure they probably show it in the gameplay, but we're not showing the gameplay. Yeah, here's some swords, and here's, uh, I guess, like, Some armor. Yeah, different uh, yeah. armor sets. Ooh, that's uh, that epic boss. Yeah, this kind of reminds me of um, like some of the boss battles from God of War Three when you're fighting the the, the Titans, and they're mm -hmm. like really, really massive. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, it looks really, it really looks good. good. It look, looks really good, and it comes out on the Switch as well and PS4. So, um, definitely on the lookout for it. All right, so moving into the next game, here's a pretty big one: the Prince of Persia: The Sands of Time is getting a modern remake. Yes, um, so, I, I love Prince of Persia back in the day, man. Yeah, yeah. So um, this one is a remake of the 2003 Prince of Persia, um, Sands of Time. I don't think I played that one. There was like a, another Prince of Persia game that I played when he was like with like a like a, a there was like a girl that was like his uh his probably companion. the second one. I think it's it's probably the second one. Mm. Yeah, so this one's going to be out for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. Ubisoft says that it's rebuilt the game from the ground up in its modern Anvil engine. And will nice. be out January 21st of 2021. All right, so we're not going to show any footage here, but we're, we're going to take a look at a couple of screenshots. So, yes. Yeah, the art style is definitely like a little on the... Um, Cartoonish side? Yeah, a little cartoony side. Yeah. That there's more. Oh wait, this is the original one, I think. Original one? Yeah. All 
All right, so moving into the next game, here we have Scott Pilgrim versus the World, the game returns, complete edition. Now, um, a little bit of history on this game. Um, for a while, it was um, delisted from the Xbox, uh, what was it, the Xbox uh, list of games and PlayStation Network as well because of a licensing issue. But um, recently, um, for, the, for the movie's 10th anniversary, they're bringing back the game. And um, I think the movie's also going to be re-released or something. Yeah. But yeah, if you're into uh, Scott Pilgrim, uh, uh, now it's it's definitely back. If you've been looking forward to to buying it, if you haven't already bought it, is it is it just a complete port, or do you actually like remastered it or anything like that? Yeah, Probably it, sound, not, huh? it sounds like it might have been remastered as well. Yeah, because it says you include bonus knives, Chow, and Wallace Wells character add-ons. And return of the extremely good chiptune soundtrack from Anna Naguchi. So they they added a couple of a couple of stuff to it. Cool, cool. And moving into the yeah. next article here, Rainbow Six Siege just coming to next gen consoles this year. Ubisoft's popular esports shooter is making the jump from making the jump to PlayStation Five and Xbox Series X. The company promises it will support up to 4K and 120 frames by the end of the year, with free next gen upgrades for existing PlayStation Four and Xbox One owners. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Here we go. Next one. Watch Dogs Legion will feature special Stormzy and Aiden Pierce missions. Nice. Now, this is one of the games we talked about before in, in, in uh, the first, uh, I guess, uh, Ubisoft Ford that I'm really a hype for, excited for. But at the same time, like, there's been news recently on Watch Dogs Legions that kind of made me less excited. Uh, basically, you, you know how you, you, you can recruit every NPC out there? Um, I knew there's going to be a limitation, but the the one rumor that I'm I'm hearing right now is that it's uh, the in terms of the NPCs you do find, those are limited. So if you want to make like a a, um, a group of like grannies, for example, you it, from what we were told, that's going to be quite impossible. Mm. So I think it's going to be limited to like uh, a certain amount of NPCs featuring those that same character set uh, that you're looking for. So. And the whole perfect def is still one of those things that in the back of my mind that I wish was more of like a permanent thing. But now you can toggle that on and off. So that kind of threw me off a little bit. But it still gets me a little bit excited. But those few things kind of made me less excited for it. Yeah. And uh, this trailer is uh, showing off uh, like one of the main characters that you'll be able to play is a London rapper by the name of Stormzy. I'm not familiar with him. And um, and you'll be able to play as um, Aiden Pierce, who was the um, is he actually a real rapper or is he like a, a rapper in game? Yeah, yeah, he's a, I mean? he's an actual rapper in real life. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, you'll be able to play you'll be able to play as um, Aiden Pierce, the uh, the main character from the first Watch Dogs. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty that's pretty cool. And uh, last one we're going to cover here: Hyperscape is getting a limited time turbo mode. Uh, Ubisoft is taking a page from Fortnite's book with a new limited time turbo mode. Uh, so it's similar to Epic Solid Gold Mode, puts puts players in a fast-paced game where all weapons are at the maximum rarity. Yeah, launches September fifteenth. Um, yep. So a few days after this video's release. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it sounds like a very short uh, Ubisoft Forward, uh, and um, th there, like we mentioned before, there's a couple of titles that we're definitely more excited for than others. Uh, but uh, it, it was def it definitely went over our radars. But um, let me know in the comment down below, like, uh, would you, would you, would you guys are excited for from this event? Uh, specifically for you, Riven, um, is there anything that you are excited for? Yeah, that Immortal Phoenix Rising uh, is actually pretty interesting. Um, I uh, I agree. Same. I've always wanted to play Breath of the Wild, but I don't have I don't own a Switch. So um, if 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 it's like you know, if it's anything like Breath of the Wild, I, I'll definitely check it out since it will be out for PlayStation 4 and PC. So yeah, basically for me, uh, I'm excited for Watch Dogs Legions, like I, like I talked about before, Immortal, uh, Immortals Phoenix, as well as the Prince of Persia remake. So um, those are the big three that I'm excited for. The others, maybe, but uh, if, 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 I, if I, I should have made that per probably those three. Mm. All right, that's it for the news for now. Thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned. We'll try to keep you guys updated on developing stories. And as usual, if you enjoyed the video, you can always support us by liking and subscribing. Um, we covered a lot of Xbox-related news today, so I want to hear what you guys have to say. Comment down below. What are your thoughts on the Xbox Series S and X? Yeah, definitely let us know. Um, also, too, guys, we will be streaming um, some Xbox games when it does come out. 
Uh, so if you guys want to watch us stream and play those games, definitely give us a follow at our Twitch channel. Link in the description. We stream every Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays with other streams on other days, depending on our schedule. And we also start up our Discord channel as well. If you guys want to join the Stanley community, definitely give us a follow. Link to our Discord in the description down below. Stanley signing out. See you guys later. There, guys. It's, it's so weird saying SNX. It just sounds like sex or something. <laughs> I know, right? What the hell? Okay, okay.